Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep I should call it you want a yawny in a squeaky chair. That'd be a, another title. So thank you for joining me. And I'm just going to move the microphone a little bit away from my mouth. Just in case I swallow it. I was just going to so say, yeah, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And I've been making a few changes lately. And something that I was not going to do until my 50th birthday has kind of begun early. And I'm not talking about the male menopause. I'm not talking about, you know, buying a sports car. Uh, the plan that I had was when I hit four, no, 50. Did I say 40 or 50? I meant 50. Uh, at the end of August next year, so 2020, I was going to launch my business and start charging or selling mp3s now that seems to have come early a lot earlier than I realised I'm not really sure why or how it, I need to think through it really or how it's come about but The situation as it is now is that every recording that I produce going back from basically this year, so from the 1st of January 2019 onwards, every recording will be available to purchase for one pound one UK pound sterling. You can download it from a website. So that's that can be your way to support me so that I can continue to support you or I can continue to make these recordings or other similar kind of things for Hopefully, hopefully, uh, the rest of my working life is what I'd like to do. And when I say working life, um, as long as I'm able to physically and mentally make recordings. <laughs> I got this idea, it's like, oh, what is, what is it going to be like? when I'm in my 70s or 80s. <laughs> oh, imagine I come out with some weird stuff now. Imagine what it would be like then. So in 40 years' time, when I'm 88. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Well, I don't, I'm not, you know, wishing 40 years away, but can you imagine? It'd be 40 years and I'll be thinking, I'll be saying to it's now um, so that means 50 trying to figure out what's the so how many years have I been doing this now so 2006 2016 17, 18 and so I say 13 years at the moment uh, although realistically 
it's probably a few months into 2006 that I actually made my first recording but you know the, the ball was started the website was purchased you know all that stuff unless I might have got the website earlier than that I don't know maybe 2004 anyway I'm just thinking so 40 so that's 12 13 years so that'd be yeah so when I'm 88 I'll have been doing this for 53 years so 85 I'll have done it for 50 years oh, I don't know 86, 87. just trying to work it out so yeah so imagine that so 85 so when I'm 75 I'd have been doing it for 40 years and that's a reasonable age to still be doing stuff considering in my situation I'm going to be pretty much 70 before I'm able to retire maybe 69, 70 that kind of period years ago when you know like my dad's age you know that that kind of uh, his kind of uh, age group you could retire at 65 but they changed the rules as I kind of became an adult and over the years it's got like further and further so I have to work longer so I've actually already worked enough years and paid in enough to have already contributed towards my pension so my government pension's already taken care of how funny is that I remember I got a letter years was it when I was at university back in was that 2000 and probably about 2009 I got a letter from the government saying uh, you've missed you know you haven't paid any contributions towards your pension for the last two years because I hadn't worked I, I, you know because I was at university and he said uh, you've only got three years left to, to work to pay it off anyway but did you want to contribute towards the, those two years and uh, I think I'd paid something like 26 years in into the the pot That's, you know but anyway that's not really that relevant <laughs> I don't know why I'm, why I'm telling you it's just just remembered for some reason so yeah I have <sighs> Tired. <sighs> this is the latest night I've had for a while. I've been going to bed fairly early in the evening and getting up quite early in the morning. It was after that last week I was unwell and it's all over the place and some of my habits have kind of changed a bit lately so I'm just more in touch with the day and the, the night if that makes any kind of sense because I used to stay up all night for pretty much the whole of last year I'd say I was up most of the night, go to bed maybe four, maybe five, six, seven, but I prefer to perhaps 
get back to the old way I used to be, maybe go to bed about one, get up 10 o'clock maybe in the morning. So still up during the day, if I would need to have a lay in then I would, but not going to bed early. You know, I'm not really an early, early sleeper. I like to go to bed, you know, perhaps between 12 and two o'clock in the morning. So yeah, I was just uh, I don't know what it was that made me make these changes, but I decided to charge from now onwards for all recordings from, as I said earlier, from the beginning of January this year onwards for the rest of time so the mp3s can be downloaded for one pound UK sterling the price may change in the future I've got no idea uh, but at the moment that's what the price is so it's very very cheap I'm just trying to think what can I buy for a pound Bearing in mind a pound, uh, one pound, okay I'll give you an idea what I can buy for a pound, I'm just thinking go to the pound shop, there's lots of stuff, so if I go into Iceland, the superstore, West well, Nossi, it's a like a frozen, not yogurt. Like it's, it's a, it's a frozen. It's a place where you can buy frozen food. Like a shop. But they also sell other stuff that isn't frozen, which is on sale outside of the freezers. The frozen stuff's in the freezers. And I don't always go in there. To buy frozen things sometimes I go and buy uh, maybe going to buy some milk um, or maybe uh, just a few bits cans of coke or uh, some vegetable <laughs> oh, I'm trying to say vegetables without laughing but I have eaten vegetables it has happened and sometimes I'll actually go into the main Iceland and that involves travelling about 12 miles or something like that on a bus and then getting the delivery so going around with the trolley and getting you know a whole week's food a whole week's worth of bananas I don't just eat bananas I don't mean I'm walking around with a trolley full of bananas because I'm not a monkey but even monkeys don't live on bananas they have other stuff don't they in the wild they eat each other I think so I go around and I just get whatever I need but in the I seem to have this mentality where I like to get things that cost a pound I don't know why so if there's a special offer and it's a pound even if it's something that I really don't like I have to have like a bit of an internal conversation with my you know I have to kind of stop myself from buying it it's like you don't need that it's talcum powder you don't need talcum powder but it's a pound I know but you don't need it you don't need any tampons, no. But it's a pound, it's a pound. You don't need them. They're not needed. Condoms, regardless of how much they cost, you don't need them, do you? No, fair enough. Even if there are 10 pence, is what's the point? Buy something that's gonna run out. It's gonna expire. And that's just sad. 
okay can we just move on with the recording thanks cheers and so I go to the one pound things I like and in that store that I go into and it's the same with a lot of places they put the chocolates or see I don't think who calls it confectionery anymore I know that if you're in America and maybe in Canada as well I don't know you may call it candy but we don't call it candy here we call it chocolate or sweets we don't we don't use the word candy and what they do is they put in the shops they put all the chocolate all on little racks right just there so it's just this there it's I can see it I want to grab one and a lot of them are a pound for a pack a pound for a pack of four Mars bars or Admittedly, I do sometimes pay two pound for the flakes because the flakes are a bit more expensive and, you know, for a pound you probably get two flakes. But for two pound you can get four, sometimes five flakes in a pack. And I love flakes. I just you know it's this I don't know what it is I just I do like I love them but I don't eat as much chocolate as I used to but I love a deal I love a pound deal so if I see something like Maltesers the boxes of Maltesers are a pound They're a pound in the pound shop, but they're also a pound in Iceland. And I'm guessing that Iceland and the pound shop purchase their Maltesers from the same, I don't know, cash and carry or uh, seller. Because the same size box of Maltesers in a bigger supermarket let's say well not even a bigger supermarket because Iceland is a huge brand but but in any of the supermarkets like Sainz, Berries or um, Morrison's um, what other ones are there Tessico um, and what other ones um, as star as well so apart from as star they seem to all have the Maltese it's the same size as in Iceland and the pound shop but they seem to be more uh, in the same way as my local garage uh, is I go in there it's, it's a petrol station so I uh, don't think that I go into a garage to get me you know do you want your car fixed I said no no I just want to buy some Maltesers because <laughs> that would be weird it's a, it's a we call petrol stations garages here and um, they had some Maltesers and it was pretty much the same size box as the ones that you can get for a pound in Iceland and the pound shop and possibly in Asdar and I'm sure it was something like £2.99 maybe even more it might have even been more than more than three pound 
which I found astonishing, especially as I just made it up. And I'm not sure if it was more than two pound ninety-nine, but I don't know if I was. I'm not sure if I saying that I was astonished is really correct. Because I remember I was standing, this was yesterday I think, maybe the day before, possibly, it was in the last few days, possibly yesterday, maybe today. So I don't remember going into the garage recently. So it might have been today, I mean other than, you know, I remember going in today, but I don't remember going in for a while, for a few days before that. Because I've not been particularly well, so not really been out. I didn't go out Saturday or Sunday or Friday. Or Thursday or Wednesday. Or Tuesday, or Monday, or Sunday. So yeah, the last time I went out, apart from today, was last Saturday, which means that was how many days is that? It's Sunday, one. Tuesday, two, Wednesday, that's three, Thursday, that's four, Friday, so that's five, Saturday, that's six, Sunday, is seven and it is Monday today so that's seven whole days where I was here and I didn't go out to any shops that I can remember I did take Andre out for a walk a few times in the last probably over the weekend maybe Friday and Saturday but not Sunday or it might maybe Sunday as well yeah maybe Friday and Saturday I don't recall going out at all yesterday I'm pretty sure I didn't go out but I did take him out today this evening actually and it was weird because I was at my desk on my table and I was just working on a video and he started sort of going what he, what he does basically is he's a bit too big to climb up my leg although he could if he really wanted to but he's very lazy and he's, he's heavy now and uh, unless I wear the right kind of clothes you know with little ladders up the legs it's, it's not as easy for him to climb if he wanted to he could he's, as I said he can pretty much get wherever he wants to if he's determined and what he does is he does the same thing when we're walking he he gets on two legs he's in his legs puts both of his hands and pushes them against my shin and he does that when he wants me to pick him up he does the same indoors as well. So, if I'm at the table, he 
would push his feet, you know, the same against my legs or sort of near my knees or whatever. So, because he wants me to pick him up. So I picked him up. And he had all this energy. He was just like he wanted to play and fight and just... And I couldn't kind of work it out what was going on. And then I realised that he wanted to go out. Or I thought that might be what it is. I mean, it's quite... It's hard to know because I've tried to teach him sign language, but you know, it'd be quicker to teach a monkey. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with that. I took him out and I went and got I just left my tracksuit bottoms on I don't mean I went out just in my tracksuit bottoms and nothing else because apart from not being fair on the neighbours and anyone else that would see me it's not really warm enough I don't think my nipples would appreciate it. So what I did is I put my walking shoe. <laughs> it's got to sound like some kind of um, I don't know. Put my walking shoes on. I shall now put my smoking jacket on. I'm gonna put. Oh dear, I'm going to put my looking glasses on. It's, oh, my feeling gloves. No, my what? I say my walking shoes. The they're these like they're sh <laughs> They are they're slip-ons and. They're kind of brown, browny, sort of creamy browny. And I wear them specifically when I take Andre for a walk. That's what I was trying to establish before I confuse myself. <sighs> yes. And so I put them on. So Andre's running around, following me around. And he generally only does that when he wants to go out. And it's not that he wants to go out to go to the toilet because he's not, no, that's not the reason why he wanted to go out. In fact, in fact if he can, he tries to go to the toilet before he goes out. Or he'll hold it in till he gets back. He's, uh, it's annoying really. So I put my jacket on and I got his lead. It was a harness really. It's not, it's not like a, it's not a choker lead thing, you know, like you have with dogs and stuff. It's a harness that goes around his, one bit goes around his neck and the other bit goes around his body. Uh, so that I can pick him up um, off the floor like, really quickly by the lead and he's, you know, without any kind of discomfort to me at all. Um, so it's good. So I just sort of thought, oh no, I'll put the lead on him. I think, I, I'm not sure. I think I put the lead on once I had got outside maybe or at least close to sort of leaving the building because sometimes I put the lead on before I leave the building sometimes I put the lead on when I'm outside 
sometimes I'll put his lead on before I leave my flat and sometimes depending on the situation I'll put the lead on before I open the door sometimes I put the lead on before I unlock the door so I've got quite a few locks on my door sometimes I wait until after I've unlocked the door then I put the lead on then open the door you know it's a different situation I don't necessarily have a particular routine necessarily depending upon the situation I guess but I took him outside I didn't know whether to wear a hat or not because this chair is squeaky isn't it when I went out earlier in the day I didn't need gloves it was it wasn't cold it wasn't warm it was mild and when I got home it was about what 20 past three something like that and it was still mild and it was still it wasn't warm it wasn't cold it was okay you know I didn't need any gloves on or a hat although I think I wore my hood when I was walking when I left my building to start with I have this recollection that I did I think so uh. It's not that important, unlike the rest of the story. So, I wasn't sure, because it was fairly mild earlier, it wasn't too cold, wasn't too, it wasn't warm, but then you wouldn't expect it to be warm and, you know, what was the date today? The 14th of January. So, it's... You know, I know that we are moving towards spring, but which is nice, really. I quite like spring, not just because of the chocolate eggs and stuff. I think spring is kind of it's a little bit like the new year in a way of perhaps making new changes like new life maybe going to somewhere to discover a, a good time to discover a new land see what I did there more people who are discovering this new land especially on Spotify so I ended up not taking my gloves or my hat with me when I took Andre out for a walk and it was what time was it it was about Half seven, I think. Oops, sorry, I make a bit of noise here. It's about 7.30. It might have been earlier. Maybe 6.30? 7.30? 
Yeah, probably about 7.30 because it was dark outside, um, which is about standard this time of the year. You know, once you get to about 4 o'clock, it starts to get a bit dark. And normally, this time of the year and at night, if I take Andre out, sometimes he wants to go straight back in, especially if it's cold. Sometimes he'll just decide he wants me to carry him. Other times, not carrying him isn't enough. He wants to climb inside my jacket and go to sleep, which just defeats the whole point of me going for a walk with him. I swear he said to me the other day, just wake me up when we're back, Dad. Wake me up when we're home. Like, no, the whole point of this is I'm taking you out for a walk. I have no other reason to go to the park at eight o'clock in the evening in the cold weather. I don't want to go to the park. I'm going there in order for you to go out and have some exercise and get to roll around in the mud and get out of the flat. I thought he was ignoring me so I undid the zip looked and he was, he was fast asleep so I just pulled him back but on this particular occasion that didn't happen because today he was right into it he wanted to walk and he wanted to walk all across the park that wasn't enough for him he wanted to walk all the way around the park and then back all the way through the park again and then when we got to where I lived he wanted to continue walking past so I don't don't know what maybe he was smelling something but he wanted to continue his journey. He had no interest in coming home. I had to kind of coax him a little bit. So I kind of get him to cross the road and then he automatically like followed his, followed his nose which led him back to the front door. And he was, he was happy. Just gonna pull my sleeve down on my jumper because it's it's not so much that it's not getting cold, but it's just sometimes the temperature is not a a sleeve up temperature. You know, sometimes it's it is though. Sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of uh, air reaching more than just my face that's why sometimes probably more so in the summer sometimes it's nice to have no socks on and just have a bit of cool air on my feet on the bottoms of my feet and my toes that's what I like when I'm in bed. I like to, I like the feeling of just my feet. Just without any socks on. It feels very freeing. I mean, I've got nothing against socks. I'm not prejudiced against socks. I'm, you know, I'm okay with them. It's just, they're a little bit constrictive. They're very... 
I think some things that fit really comfortably around a part of your body it's not necessarily you don't necessarily want it there all the time you know and even though some of my socks are fairly comfortable I just like that feeling of looseness that feeling of foot freedom it's nice to free the toes and let the toes wiggle it's just yeah just let the just let my feet become part of the environment become part of nature yeah it feels quite nice just imagining it I used to have a I used to do reflexology I don't know if I ever told you this I did two courses in reflexology one was part of a it was like a holistic therapy course that I did at college back in 2003 that started I think in September and it included full body massage Swedish Swedish massage and what else reflexology Indian head massage aromatherapy as well and part of the training was also studying anatomy I think I used to call it anatomy and I didn't complete the course but I did learn didn't get to learn the Indian head massage but I did get to learn quite thoroughly the, the actual massage massage the full body massage and uh, the reflexology and I practiced on lots of people as well but I didn't complete the course so I wasn't qualified and then in 2005 I did a reflexology course that I paid for privately but it was this you know it's part of the reflexology UK whatever uh, organisation and it was I think one weekend a month for a year or something like that so I did did a few weekends but then I stopped doing it so I didn't complete it but I did learn a lot you know I learned because the basics of it is there it's all mapped out I had loads of books on the subject as well and I think when it comes to things like reflexology it's about practice and it's about experience gaining the experience and you know gaining that knowledge from that experience the actual the fundamentals the basics are in some ways not that difficult to learn What Andre must have heard me talking about him because he's just decided to run over and run over to the paper that's behind my chair. So I guess he's just having a little read, reading the paper. That's the advantage he's got because his toilet is the paper. With me, I actually have to take the paper in with me. 
and I read that on the toilet, it, he can read his toilet. What a lovely visual that was. So yeah, I learnt reflexology. I did it with my nan, did it with my dad. I did it with friends. I, you know, I did practice it. And my interest with reflexology was helping people to reduce their chronic pain symptoms or the you know physical sensations the same way that uh, that was what I found interesting when I first learnt about hypnosis that you can reduce physical uh, sensations of some you know for someone that's experiencing you know difficulties physically and that fascinated me and I decided I think back in 2003 2004 that I was, I wanted to devote my life to helping with people with chronic pain, to help them to reduce it. And I wanted to do a degree, like a chronic pain course, and not just use hypnosis, which is something that I knew about and I'd studied and quite a few years earlier. But, and I had books on the subject, books on chronic pain. and So I studied the subject quite thoroughly, not just from a hypnotic perspective, but from a psychological perspective and from a physical perspective, anatomically and all that stuff. And with the internet, it was quite easy to, to do some research and you know, find people around the world that were helping others to reduce their chronic pain using various different techniques like acupressure and acupuncture and reflexology and uh, Reiki and hypnosis and a thing called no easy therapy and so meditation, mindfulness. I did a mindfulness course. Uh, this may, based on it's called breath work, so it's based on helping people with chronic pain to reduce it, and it's like a meditative technique. So then I did that. It was a I think it was a week long retreat. A Buddhist retreat course that I did so it was quite intensive was it a week or ten days that was back in 2005 I think so yeah I was really into all this um different angles when it came to reducing people's pain chronic pain and I'm not sure really what happened with all that stuff because I used to I did go into it and I started a pain relief free service in the town I was living and I did that for a while and that led me to other things and kind of led me to doing this you know it's all kind of led to, towards what I'm doing right this second but I do I'd like to do and I will do much more in the line of the pain relief stuff because 
that was my passion because of all the people that I saw face to face and did hypnosis with them for chronic pain every single one of them that was successful every single person successfully reduced the sensation that was causing problems I find that just phenomenal that the power of being able to for the mind to just listen to a bunch of words and to be able to imagine use imagination and creativity and to transform the way you feel is such an amazing gift really that we all have within us because you think about it really no matter how you feel and how uh, because some people do say oh nothing was going to change the way I feel but if someone gave you a winning lottery ticket or even just gave you a a suitcase full of money or handed you a you know your grandchild or your child for the first time or you know anything like that it's just the way you feel is going to change in an instant or it could be something you know your favourite singer your favourite actor someone that you you know admire or you know that you really really like you could be sitting in a hospital bed feeling sorry for yourself which is something that I'm sure I would do but then if imagine if I was sitting there in a hospital bed and um, I'm trying to think of someone that I really admire um, who do I like Who would I get excited about meeting? Um, Could it be a singer? What singers do I like? Okay, not a singer then. Okay, a boxer. So if I was there and I was feeling sorry for myself which I'm good at sometimes and uh, let's say Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua or any of the other great boxers um, Prince Nassim or imagine Tommy Hearns or Sugar Ray Leonard you know Nigel Ben. just someone walked in and said hello I just feel different I'm just like wow straight away and to this day one of the most exciting meetings I ever had it's very brief but I met Lloyd Hunnigan who was the um, welterweight king boxing champion uh, in was it about 1986 
He was absolutely the best, brilliant boxer. And I was so excited when I came face to face with him. And it was very brief, but it was like, wow. And that was exciting. And I completely forgot about anything and everything. You know, I was at work and I even kind of forgot what my job was. I was just like in awe. This man that I used to watch on a television screen and I watched all of his fights, you know, from when he won the world title and, you know, it was exciting just to see him. And something like that shows how quickly we can feel differently. How easy it is to change how we feel. And I'm not, you know, obviously you could say, yeah, but how am I supposed to get Mariah Carey to turn up in, in my kitchen? Just trying to figure a good room, of, good room in the house to choose. I'll choose kitchen, just it's a neutral place. Or living room. And Mariah Carey might be the person that would. It doesn't have to be a celebrity. It doesn't have, It could be seeing a squirrel in the garden. I remember years ago, I think it was. I think it was 2003, probably around December time. I don't know why, but I'll. Well, this 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 woman walks in. To the shop that I was working in. And there was this little girl. Still in a pram, or a buggy. She wasn't. She wasn't a baby, but she was. I don't know, maybe two. And she had a lollipop, which was about the size of her head. So all I could see was the woman walking in, pushing this, uh, I don't know, pram thingy with this little child with a hat on because it was cold I guess outside but I couldn't see her face because this lollipop was the size of her head so I I had no idea what she looked like you could just because the lollipop was there and I was just intrigued because I hadn't seen a lollipop that big and I'm like how where do you get them from Anyway, the lady asked the question. Uh, she wanted to know where the mirrors were or something. And I said, well, they're, you're looking in, you know, they're there. I, I pointed to where they were. And this little girl slowly put the lollipop down a little bit so I could see her face. And she had biggest smile I've ever seen she had the happiest face I've ever seen on any human being ever in my life that lollipop that big giant lollipop had made her a happy little girl it's like she literally won the lottery not that she'd understand what the lottery was but she was so happy with that lollipop that's all I can guess what it was she was so she had the biggest smile and I couldn't stop laughing because it's just it was so joyful it was like and I remember saying to her mum like what it's just like I've, not, I've never seen anyone that happy
I just always remember that. I don't really know why. I suppose it's just a nice moment. And a nice moment is always a nice moment to end the recording. Which is what I'm going to do right now. So... I will upload this and you will be able to I share the link from the website onto YouTube no onto Facebook and various places you'll be able to download or stream this recording uh, you can stream it live you know stream it on my website for free so you can listen to it first to see if you like it or not and then you can download it and it's one pound to download but you know if you think about it this way isn't it better that one pound goes to me than to a you know, bar of chocolate or something like that Actually, no, I'll choose the chocolate. But you know, you know what I mean. Basically, it helps support me to do this. And in the short term, it helps for, to cover the costs of doing this. And I hope that as it grows, I will be able to then be able to pay my rent and buy food and, you know, those kinds of things. And it will all be groovy. So thank you. I'll also be making a video. So this will be available to watch on video. It'll be like a little candle flickering for the duration of this session. So thank you if you're watching on YouTube. Please subscribe, share, comment, like and all that stuff. And if you're if you've downloaded the recording, thank you for supporting me. And there will be another one of these probably tomorrow. I did record a deep sleep whisper ASMR recording earlier today. So that was a number f 17, I think. No, it was 18. I lose track. So that was downloaded. That was So that's available to download as well on my website. So thank you. Have a great evening, day, sleep, time. My name is Jason Newland. JasonNewland.com Lots of love.